meet Colonel Clifford Worthy. You might recognize the last name. His daughter is Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy. Well, Clifford's life journey as a West Point grad and soldier at a time of segregation and struggle is a fascinating one. And he's just published an autobiography called Black Knight, an African-American family's journey from West Point, a life of duty, honor, and country. Stephen Henderson met up with Clifford and Kim Worthy for a conversation. Talk about how important that was, that uh, the decision to go to West Point and the ability to get in, which wasn't always available to African Americans. Well, that, that was just, it was almost like the get, get, get the opportunity to go that was thrust on me. Before that time, I had no plans about West Point. Uh, I didn't even know anything about the Army. I have no military background, family military background. But I met a young man uh, at Old Main, that was before it became Wayne State, it was called Wayne, just Wayne University, who, who came and still had his uniform on. Cliff Worthy wanted to go to medical school until that young man told him about West Point. But in 1946, African Americans couldn't go there, not until President Harry Truman desegregated the armed forces a couple years later. Congressman John Dingell Sr. offered Cliff continued support. He wouldn't let go until three years, for three years until he got me in. And on July 1st of 1949, I entered West Point. And, uh, and you knew right from the beginning that I belonged to West Point. That was almost they, 70 years ago. Yeah. Well, here's one right here that uh, shows a picture of me as a, <laughs> as, as a senior cadet. That's as a senior. Wow, it's amazing how young you yeah, look there, uh, right? I didn't have any feeling of being um, oppressed in any way. Uh, at that time, because it's it's just a madhouse when you go there. Uh, Upper class are yelling at you, and you got to get your clothing. You got a thousand things you got to do. So I went through that process, and um, and for, I can honestly say, from for four years that I was there, uh, I never really felt that I was being discriminated against, mm. except in one one area, and that was housing. When you got there, they uh, put you in companies based on height primarily, and uh, and so they wanted to keep the parade purposes. They wanted to look good by all the cadets being the same height. Well, except for the black cadets, they were all forced to. We were forced to live together, even though one of my classmates was four, about four inches shorter than myself and the other one. And so, as a result, he had to make certain adjustments to his Kate walk, the way he walked, the long stride. He was put into the middle of the formation to hide him. And, <laughs> but other than that, I, I felt no, no, yeah. felt that discriminated against. Again, this, uh, this theme that comes up again and again in the book and throughout your life of this, you know, dealing with challenge, uh, dealing with the, the kind of unexpected. Well, Vietnam was full of the unexpected things that you read about all the time about. Uh, uh, the fact that you're fighting an enemy that you can't see, don't, don't know because they look like regular civilians. The uh, isolation of being, I was an artillery, but field artillery battalion commander, which consisted of three firing batteries, and those are, those are the, war, war, the war part of that battalion. And uh, they would be spread all over the, uh, the northern part of South, South Vietnam, and so you had to maintain contact with them, and they would be miles apart and they had to op operate uh, almost autonomously at times because of, because of the time and distance factors. And uh, so that was a real challenge uh, with that. With it. And um, the challenge of, of the, the kind of fight you were fighting. For Kim, having a father in the military meant a different kind of challenge, being constantly on the move. You know, when you're growing up, you don't really know that it's not normal. I mean, you, you feel it's not normal for you to, to move every year mm -hmm. and you have to get to know a whole new set of classmates, a whole new school, set of teachers, everything. Um, you really don't get the chance to participate in uh, different things because you know you're going to be leaving the next year. But uh, for me, it was normal. Mm -hmm. What I think it did, though, I think it made me able later on, as I was approach approaching adulthood, be able to adapt to different situations pretty easily and readily. So you talk a lot in the book about the challenges of raising children. Um, what are the things that stand out for you in terms of what those challenges taught you? Well, of course, with Mark, my son, that was a big challenge. He right. was diagnosed as a special needs youngster. Back in those days, and even today, uh, resources uh, are very thin about what to, to help uh, kids like that and families like that. 
because some of the resources that we, we dealt with, they, it was a family affair. You know, they wanted to make sure that the families were all involved. In fact, the, the kids had to go to the, se the sessions along with the parents. Kim was always oh, had a mind of her own. Doesn't everybody, uh, uh, isn't everybody uh, supposed to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she has a, a bit higher degree than most. It's I remember when she was, <laughs> she was 15, and she wanted to take driver's ed so she could, could drive. I thought this was about you. Well, <laughs> he asked you questions too. I didn't write a book. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, she wanted to uh, get uh, uh, driver's ed. Well, when you were 16, uh, you didn't have to pay for it, but when you were 15, I had to pay for it. Plus, I didn't really want her driving at 15 anyway. So I said, no, put my foot down. No, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna allow it. In, my, in Kim's mind, I'm sure it was said, fine, I'll take care of it. So she, the very next day, she had a job at McDonald's and she paid for it, so. <laughs> to, that, that's that's, sure that's typical enough. of. I came home with a driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the message that you think resonates about this story in 2019. Kids want to succeed no matter what their background, race, whatever. It's just that uh, accessibility, and uh, one of the points I wanted to make in the book um, is that you never know when the, you're gonna have an opportunity to do something, seize it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, uh, make the most of it, realizing it's not gonna be perfect, realizing that some of the people you're gonna deal with are not good people. Mm -hmm. But then there are some good people, because I can think of many examples, and they're all featured in the book, in the book, about how people have helped me along the way. And it gets back to what you were talking about, mm -hmm. about character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, if you don't have any character, it's gonna be very difficult for you in this life, and, or it will lead you down the wrong path. But, and I think that's what, what comes from some of the strong institutions of today, whether it's a military institution or or another institution, if you, they can instill dignity and character and kindness and compassion, and if you can instill all that into your children and generation to generation, we really will be better at some point.